Welcome to As the Crow Flies Hiking. I'm headed on a trip, a trip to Colorado, doing a section hike of the Colorado Trail from Silverton to Durango. And I thought I'd stop this evening to talk a little bit about some of my gear and a few items that I'm taking for the first time. Let's look at some of the main gear for this gear loadout of a section hike of the Colorado Trail. The first big item that I'll talk about is what I have all my food in, and that is a Ursac. Yeah, it's the first time I've ever used one of these. It is a very sturdy piece of gear, I will say. Usually I am hanging my food bag, the Hilltop Packs food bag, in a tree somewhere. But on this trip, I decided to get a Ursac because we're going to be above 10,000 feet most of the time and there won't be any trees to hang my food bag in. Now I've heard pros and cons of these things. I don't know how well they work. I've heard some people say that a bear, if it gets a hold of it, will just smash all your food. But others say these things work great. I don't know. Inside it I do have a plastic scent free bag. It's one of these uh, OPSAC bags. I have two of them that I'm going to keep my food inside there at night and then you tie it to a tree. I got to do a little education for myself on how to tie it to a tree. I think there's a pretty simple knot and there's some videos out there. I might as well be looking at that tonight. Another item that I'll be taking on this trip that I haven't really used before. I got this recommendation from Southern Hike, Taylor. He said, hey, try these energy chews from Scratch Lab. I've never tried these before, but they do have 50 milligrams of caffeine in them and they're sugar and, you know, gluten-free, dairy-free, all that good stuff. So I'm hoping that this will give me a little energy as I hike up some of those big mountains. So I've got one for every day and that should be good. Along with that, I'll also be taking some Tailwind and other types of electrolytes such as liquid IV that I'll use and kind of switch it up during the day and hopefully that will keep me energized and uh, hydrated. As far as my big three, those really haven't changed. I'll just say a little bit about that. I've in my Hilltop Packs uh, waterproof bag, I have a, a lighting equipment 20 degree bag. I'm really thinking about changing this out. I'm really thinking about going to another manufacturer of quilts. I've always been told that these things don't have the greatest temperature ratings. It says 20, but I've used it for a long time and it's really worked well for me. I don't expect the temperatures to be that cold, so I'm going to take this one. It's pretty light and hopefully this will suffice for the temperatures in Colorado. Along with my other parts of my big three, I'm using the Z-Packs Plex Solo. I've been using this for a while and it is wonderful for me. It, gives me all the room I need, it's super light, 14 ounces, and I only need one tracking pole. I'm actually taking two tracking poles on this trip, but I'm really excited to continue to use this. It's been a wonderful piece of gear for me. Another piece of gear that I'm going to use for the first time is kind of a companion to this piece. This is a Appalachian Gear hoodie. This is the 80-20, 80 alpaca and 20 tinsel. They sent me a full hoodie, the thicker one, and I'm going to be using it. I love it. It's the gray one, and it is just absolutely going to be super warm. I'm really excited to get to use this, especially down in the cooler temperatures. Now, my pack is at the bottom of this suitcase. I'm not getting it out, but it's the pack that I've been using forever, which is the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Junction Pack. Absolutely love that pack. It's been great for me. It's so comfortable. It carries the weight, just carries anything I need to carry. So I'm super excited to continue to use that. On this trip, as I have been using for a while now, the Brooks Cascadia 16. I thought about getting the 17, but really I decided not to get it because I've used this on several trips, the 16, and you can see the tread is still going strong. I believe these things are gonna end up being a lot more durable than the altars that I use for years. Maybe someday I'll get the 17. I don't know any what the differences are between them, 
but so far these things have been wonderful and the tow box is wide enough for me it doesn't have any issues so i'm going to continue to use those of course i've got my thermarest neo air x light i'll be using that as my pad and it's the 20 inch wide pad 72 long so as long as this thing continues to function as it's designed i will continue to use it i've had no issues with it I I know some people like a wider pad, but this has been perfect for me and it gives me a little space inside the Plex Solo that it's not so wide and it gives me more room to carry my gear. I have gotten from Leonidas on the trail the recommendation of these uh, supplements that they're all natural ingredients, so hopefully this will help and I'm going to take some tonight, take some tomorrow, and it's just a a supplement that helps with elevation. I think it's called Elevation RX or something. I'll put it on the screen. But I think that this will help me. At least um, it was a recommendation that Leonidas on the trail got, so I'm going to use those. Along with, if I do get sick, I got these Summit Altitude Sickness patches. You're supposed to put them behind your ear here. And if I do get sick, which I did last year, at least I've got these. They work for, I think, 72 hours. And I'm hoping to find a way not to get sick last year was pretty rough for me getting sick on the trail and I hope to not do that again now after we get through with our six days I believe on the Colorado Trail from Silverton back to Durango we will do I think Mount Quandry I think it's what it's called but it is a 14er hopefully I'll have my trail legs by then on that I will use again my Waymark mile pack for that day pack this is also the pack that I will use for my travel, put all my electronics in and my batteries and things that you can't put on the plane. Now another new piece of gear that I have that I'm taking in my carry-on is this Plex Solar. This solar pad folds out like this. I have not had a chance to use it. I am simply going on the recommendation of Andy Parrish Outdoors. Now I have attempted to use it at my office at work and put it in the windowsill and it did charge my phone. So I'm hoping at the very least I can use this to charge my phone and then my other battery banks. I have two Anchor uh, 20,000 milliamp battery banks and I hope to use those and this maybe will be a supplement. Uh, a couple of years ago when I went to Utah, Paxalot friends of mine had a probably a better solar pad than this this is a cheap one off of Amazon it wasn't very expensive but I was hoping that maybe if I did have a good Sunday Sun like Sun as in the big round ball of fire I could use this to power up a couple of things lay it out at camp and maybe get some power off of this thing so and also it has two carabiners that I can attach it to the back of my backpack and use it out there so I think I'm going to take it and see what happens. Hopefully it'll work. If not, then it was probably a bad decision on my part. Otherwise, I think it's something that maybe if it does work, I can use from now on. If not, it wasn't a huge investment, so not that big a deal. I think it's important to note on this Colorado trip that I actually purchased a new Sawyer Squeeze. It's brand new. I've soaked it a little bit just to get it going and I hope there's no issues with it, but my other Sawyer Squeeze, even with a little vinegar and things, it's just kind of probably reached its last leg. So in my uh, filter bag, I've got my Sawyer Squeeze, I've got a Canock uh, bag, c -knock, whatever you call it, the, the uh, leader bag, and that has been really good for me. It works great with the Sawyer Squeeze as a companion. So that will be how I filter water with this bag. I do have my Diddy bag that I'll be carrying. It has everything in here, including a bug net for my head. It has my first aid kit. It, of course, I'm definitely gonna take some sunscreen because I think that could be an issue uh, with the sun being down. I will also note that a new piece of gear I have for this trip is the Flex Tail. That's right, Flex Tail Pillow. I've been using another pillow for a long time but I decided to try out one of these flex tail pillows and I really like it number one it's got this strap that goes around the pad which is going to be great and it has the same type of uh, valve on the side you simply 
can release a, a quick release or you open up one of them just with a few breaths you have a great size pillow it's, it's really wide and it has a ridge to the top so I'll be laying on it like this with the higher ridge next to my neck to get a little bit more elevation this whole material will come off of this this uh, pillow so you can wash it and so when I get home and it's real stinky I can wash it and of course a quick release on there so Flextail made a really cool uh, pillow for the trail and I'm super excited to use it my other one had really started to not maintain air with it so I'm glad to at least get another pillow to try out on the trail I've used it only a couple of times at home uh, on my own bed, so we'll see how it goes on the trail, but it looks to be exactly what I'm looking for. A little bit more stack, I guess you could say, on the pillow. It packs down really small, just like my other one. Of course, I do have the bug net for my head. This is a Sea to Summit head net, and I assume that just like in Wyoming, there's going to be a lot of mosquitoes, maybe black flies. I don't really know what I'm in for, but whatever it is, this bug net has been great. I will say, if you've seen my Wyoming videos, it's important to remember not to spit when you have the bug net on, which I did, and it was kind of nasty. So I have washed it, and I'm ready for the trail with it again. I did purchase some blister moleskin or a blister med kit. You can get these at REI and different things, but it has a lot of moleskin in it, so it'll just supplement my first aid kit and all the things that I have in there. Otherwise, my ditty bag is essentially just like I did on the video, which I'll put up here somewhere, of all the same essential items that I keep in my ditty bag. I did take out a few items because I'm trying to go as light as possible, and I think that I've gotten it down as, as low as I can. I've even tried to look at my food consumption trying to get to about a pound a day of food, something like that. Essentially, that is my big three, and that is some items that I'll be taking that are a little bit new for this trip. Uh, I am taking a puffy jacket. I'm taking the decathlon jacket that I've used for a while. Um, it's super affordable, and it's a great jacket for people to use for backpacking. They're getting into backpacking, and it's very warm. So I will take that, so I think I should be warm course I've got an extra pair of clothing but that's for off the trail otherwise I'm just taking one pair of clothes and then a pair of clothes for town travel I'm ready to go I've got to get up at 3 a.m. and get to the airport but the next videos that will be out are my trip to Colorado never been on the Colorado trail before super excited to get to do it so <laughs> let's go Colorado Trail section hike, Silverton to Durango. I'll see you on that adventure in the next videos. Thanks for watching As the Crow Flies Hiking.